Imagine a world where rain doesn't just fill rivers or flood streets. It actually generates electricity. A world where thunderstorm doesn't cause power outages, but instead power slides, sensors, and homes. As bizarre as that may sound, this is exactly what researchers in Singapore are beginning to explore, using an incredible technology that allows us to turn rainfall into energy. And no, we are not talking about traditional hydroelectric dams or solar panels with rainwater runoff. This is something new, something small, scalable, and surprisingly powerful. A method of electricity generation that relies not on vast rivers or wind turbines, but on individual rain drops. At the heart of this innovation lies a fascinating technology called a triboelectric nano generator or tank. Developed by scientists and engineers, this system takes advantage of the triboelectric effect, a natural phenomenon that you have probably already experienced without realizing it. Ever rubbed a balloon against your hair or watched it stick to a wall? That's the triboelectric effect. Static electricity caused when two materials rub together and exchange electrons. In this case, some materials love to give away electrons and others like to take them. When they come into contact and then separate, a charge builds up. Now imagine a scenario where millions of water droplets, each falling naturally through a designed tube, are constantly brushing past a surface that's ready to accept or shed electrons. That means every drop becomes a tiny natural generator. Multiply that across an entire rainstorm and suddenly you are looking at a powerful yet clean and quiet method of generating electricity. Singapore, with its limited landmass and frequent tropical rains, was the perfect place for this experiment. Scientists at National University of Singapore developed a unique kind of rain energy harvesting system using plug flow design. Here is how it works. Rain water flows through tubes made from special materials like PTE, polytetrafluoroethylene, that have a high capacity for gaining or losing electrons. As water slides through or splash against the inner walls of these tubes, it creates friction. That friction creates charge and the system captures that charge and transfer it into electrodes that feed into a storage system. Either a battery or capacitor, the plug flow part of the design ensures that water flows in a uniform piston-like way maximizing contact with tube's surface. More contact equals more friction, which equals more electricity. The entire system is simple in theory, yet incredibly refined in practice. So where did this idea come from? Although the triboelectric effect is an old discovery, people have known about static shocks for centuries. It wasn't until around 2012 that Chinese scientist Zhong Ling Wang proposed the concept of triboelectric nano generators. Early tanks were small and mostly used in labs conditions to power tiny sensors or light up using single LEDs. But with time and research, materials improved. Researchers found ways to create larger arrays and combine tanks with other sources of energy like vibration, motions, or water flow. Singapore saw the opportunity in a city where space is a premium and sunlight isn't always reliable. Rain became the most consistent natural resource available. This made it a perfect test bed for applying things in an urban, high-density environment. Scientists developed tubes that could handle not just light rain, but the heavy downpours common in Southeast Asia. These devices were flexible, scalable, and designed to be installed along gutters, building exteriors, drainage pipes, even on umbrellas or wearable gears. In lab tests, a single tube connected to a storage system was able to light up over 100 small LED bulbs just using rainfall. That might sound small in the world of massive power grids, but for localized uses such as powering streetlights, environmental sensors, or Internet of Things IoT devices. It's a revolutionary idea. Why does this matter? Because the world is entering a new phase of energy use of microenergy era. One where it's not just massive power plants that matter, but millions of small, self-sustaining devices all generating or storing their own energy. Think about cities across Southeast Asia where rain is plentiful but power grids are overloaded. Or in disaster zones where traditional power lines go down but rainfall continues. Or even refugee camps where electricity is rare but the monsoon season is reliable. In all these places, the ability to harvest electricity from rain could do difference between darkness and light, between silence 
maintenance and communication. The potential applications are vast. Road sites, rooftops, building exteriors, drain pipes, storm water tanks, and even wearable clothing. With enough rain and the right design, any one of these could become a small energy source. Of course, challenges remain. The amount of electricity generated from a single raindrop is small, so scaling up means deploying thousands of tubes, each carefully placed and maintained. These materials need to be durable, resistant to erosions, temperature shifts, and constant water flow. There's also the issue of energy storage. When it rains, you generate power. But when it doesn't, you need a way to store what you have collected. Capacitors and batteries work, but they increase the cost and maintenance needs. Yet, field is moving fast. New materials like magazines, advanced polymers, and multi-layered nanofilms are being tested to improve energy transfer. Designs are getting smarter. Some tubes now combine rain energy, wind vibration, and motion energy all in one compact device. Imagine a smart pole on a street corner that harvests wind, water, and even footsteps. That's the future we are heading toward. What's most fascinating is the shift in perspective this represents. For over a century, we have relied on a centralized power, giants, plants, long power lines, huge infrastructure. But now, technology is showing us that a small, local, decentralized energy might be just as important. Especially in a world that's urbanizing rapidly, facing climate instability and demanding more power than ever before. Singaporean rains tubes might not just replace the power stations, but they can enlarge them, reduce the stress on the grid, and create resilience in places that desperately need it. And let's not forget the people behind this innovation. Young researchers, engineers, and scientists who believe that raindrops could power the future. One of the lead scientists at NAS once said, we wanted to make the rain useful, not just something to hide from. That one sentence captures the essence of what science should do. Take something ordinary, even inconvenient, and turn it into a solution for humanity. That's what they did here. They looked at the rain and they did not see a problem, they saw potential. So the next time you are caught in a thunderstorm, think differently. Look at the water falling around you and imagine Imagine what if each drop was powering something, lighting up sensor, charging a beacon, storing electricity for dark night in a time when the climate is changing fast and energy needs are soaring. Perhaps the answer isn't always in building bigger, but in seeing smarter. Raindrop by raindrop, idea by idea, we are learning how to capture the power that nature already offer us. Quietly, cleanly, and constantly. The future isn't just bright sometimes. It's wet.